Okay, we're looking here at topic 3.1, which is market structures. Really, really important one for doing well in economics. It's one of those topics that comes up year after year after year in the exam. Uh, looking at recent years, if you look at the marks, it's probably coming up from maybe 10 to 15%. And if you add into supply and demand, actually, it's probably about the same. So just certain foundations that you've got to be really, really strong on if you want to be able to unlock those higher grades in the paper. Like I would always think that if you're preparing for an exam, like the best situation that you can get into going in there is like, yeah, you can have good days and bad days, but like what you want is to be in a position that if you're to sit at a thousand times over, taking account of the good day, bad day thing, that the range of outcomes you'll experience is quite narrow in terms of results and it's narrow towards the upper end of where you'd like it to be. And the only way that you get into that position is if you're an absolute savage at the sort of the, the foundations and the principles and the key topics as a starting point. So market structures is one of those topics you just need to be really, really good at. Um, it's one where exam questions tend to repeat themselves a lot, so it's certainly one that you can prepare well for. Um, it's definitely like a lot of things in microeconomics, a case where the more you understand, the greater flexibility you have. So yeah, you can route learn it, but like that is restrictive. Um, and for each market structure that we look at, there's certain things that you need to know. So you, you need to know the features of any market structure with a particular emphasis on the unique features of that market structure. You need to be able to explain the shape of the demand curve for market structures. You need to be able to draw and explain the short and long run equilibrium positions in the market structures and know the advantages and disadvantages. So when I say we're studying market structures here, what we're studying really is how different industries are structured in terms of the number of firms in the industry and the level of competition in the industry. It's what we call market concentration. Really, we're studying how different industries have different market concentrations. So like if an industry is highly concentrated, it means that there is a small number of firms in that industry competing with each other. So there's not many firms. And then we're looking at, okay, what does that mean for how they behave towards one another? And what does it mean for us as consumers? So in that case, like for us as consumers, we haven't got much choice. They don't really need to compete with each other much on price. So it's not as good for us. Other industries, there aren't many competitors. We say they're lowly concentrated. And so they're really, really competitive. So better for us as consumers, we get loads of choice. Those firms compete on price a little bit and it's generally better for us as consumers. So our focus here in this video, we're going to look at that idea of market concentration. So we're going to start here with the definition. We're, look, we're going to look at how you measure market concentration. There's two measurements. The second one is kind of the more important one. It's the one that's coming up a lot on exams in recent years. So first thing, the definition of market concentration. And this is what we're really studying within market structures. We're looking at this market concentration. So we're looking at the extent to which a small number of firms dominate an industry. So if you take like mobile phone industry in Ireland, there's a couple of providers there. You've got like Air, Vodafone 3. Don't know if I'm missing anyone else. Like that's probably, let's say that's it. So like there's not massive choice for us. Um, they don't really have to compete with each other as much on price as maybe in other industries. So take like hairdressers, beauty salons, just, beauty salons, there's thousands of them around the country. So we've got way more choice in that second industry there. So if there's a small number of firms who dominate the industry, we said it's highly concentrated. If there's loads of competition, like the hairdresser thing, well, then we say it's lowly concentrated. So we're going to look at the two measurements of market concentration here then. So first way we can measure how concentrated or how competitive a market is, is we use this thing here, which is called a four firm concentration ratio. So I'm just going to show you this one in case you see it. It hasn't been asked in any exams written on the new course. And the idea here is that you would just look at the market share of the four biggest firms in the market and use that as an indicator to tell you how competitive the industry is or not. That's the idea. So you just look at the four biggest firms and see, add up their market share, and you'd use that as an indicator of how concentrated the market is. So if I was coming in here and show you some data, right? This is the, some data on market share for supermarkets in Ireland. So we've got like their sales here and then we've got the firm here. So total supermarket sales we're saying are 300 million. The firms in that market are Tesco, Lidl, Dunn, Supervalue, Aldi, and then some others as well who holds the market share. So we have their sales in millions here. So if I look at the big four there, if I look at Tesco, if I look at Dunn's, if I look at Supervalue, and next biggest is Aldi. So if I was to use a four firm concentration ratio there to evaluate how competitive that market is, what I would do is I would just add these. I would add that, I would add that, I would add that, I would add that. And then I would divide it by the total market share and express it as a percentage. So I'd add four biggest, so that, 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 and that. If I was to divide that by 300 there, which is the total market share, it would come in at around 77% or something like that. So how do you interpret that then? 
So if it's higher than 70%, we would say it's, it's a high ratio, or we would say it's highly concentrated, so highly concentrated. That means there's a limited competition. The top four firms, they do dominate. Like if you think about an industry, if there is four firms that hold almost 80% of the market share, like there isn't a whole lot of competition there. Like we're basically, it's basically like saying as consumers, we're only choosing from four providers or something. So the implications of that is it could lead to higher prices and less innovation. And this is one thing we'll see throughout market structures again and again and again, that like, as we move from a market structure where there's loads of competitors to one where there's very few competitors, the motivation to innovate becomes less and less and less. Because like, if you've got to compete with loads of other firms, the only way you can win market share is to do something better than them, to come up with something new or to innovate. But if you're down the other end where you've got no competitors, you, people have to buy from you anyway because there isn't much choice, so there's less motivation to innovate. And if we were to get a number there of between 40 to 70, we just say it's moderately concentrated. This means that there is some competition, but the top firms, they still have some market power. So we're sort of in between. There's not loads of competition, but there's not no competition. We're sort of in between. And if you were to get below 40%, that means we've got a competitive market. It's lowly concentrated. So the key thing there is you've got many players. No single firm or group are dominating that market. So no single firm or group has significant control over the market. Impact for us as consumers, we've got competitive prices and more choice. So we're lowly concentrated, good for the consumer. The next one then, and this is kind of the more important one, the more important way we can calculate market concentration is this guy here, the HHI or Hirschman or Herfindahl Hirschman Index. This is one that's come up a good few times in recent exams. And this is something that does have good actual real world applications. Like I've seen the central bank use this in some of their economic reports to kind of uh, show how competitive the banking industry is. It's something that I've actually seen students slip into a research project as a nice kind of blend of like, they did some research, got some data, and then used a HHI, which is something from the course, and they kind of combined them, which is kind of the idea of the, of, of the research project to some degree. So it's a nice thing to slip in to, to something like that as well. But how it works is, is this. Let me show you the formula here. You can largely, what looks very complicated. So this is the formula for it. Um, but I'll explain it to you in simple language. All you're gonna do is get the market share of each firm as a percentage. Now, in any question that's come up in the exam so far, that's been given to you. So you're given this column here. You're given the market share of firms expressed as a percentage. So all you do is square the market share of each firm in the market and add it together. So if I want to calculate the concent if I wanted to evaluate how concentrated the supermarket industry is using the HHI here, this is what I do. I would just square the market share of each of these. So I get Tesco 21.4 squared. I would get Lidl 11.9 squared. Plus the next one, well that's the others in the market, that's 10.6, I'm gonna add that, squared. I'm gonna calculate Dunn's market share if I square, 22.2 squared, I'm gonna add that on plus super value, plus Aldi, I'm gonna square them and add them on as well. So you just square the market share of all the firms in the industry and add them. So that's, a, that's a, the simplest way to put it. Square the market share of all the firms in the industry and then you just add them, right? And then you get an answer. So here my answer is 1818.98. So similar to what we had with the four firm concentration ratio, you're gonna to have to make some meaning of that. So this is how we do that. If you get an answer that's between zero and 1500, we say it's a competitive market or that it's lowly concentrated. So there's lots of competitors. It's good for us as consumers. They've got motivation to innovate. There's probably lower prices. If it's between 1,500 and 2,500, as our answer there was, we say it's a moderately concentrated market. So it's not really competitive, but at the same time, it's not dominated by a few, you know, small number of large firms. Anything between 2,500 and 10,000 is highly concentrated. And obviously the more we move this way along the continuum, the less competitive it's getting. To the extent that, if you just had one firm in the market, right? So you had what we call a monopoly. So if you just had one firm, they'd have 100% of the market share. So 100 squared would be 10,000. So that's, you can't get less competitive than that. And that's what we're doing. We're measuring the size of firms in relation to the entire industry. And it does show us the extent of competition between firms. Usually in the real world, if there was 50 firms, they might include the largest 50 but like a lot of industries don't even have 50, and answers vary between zero and 10,000. Uh, so look, I'll show you a quick exam question on it. This tends to be the nature of the exam questions. They're really, really, really straightforward. So this one here from 2023 says, the bar chart below shows the market share by Irish dairy producers in 2021. And you're given a little table here that shows 
uh, different producers and how much of the market share they have. They have. It says here, based upon the figures for the bar chart, calculate the HHI for Irish dairy producers show your workings. So pretty simply, you just square them all and add them. So carry group of 48, so 48 squared plus Glanby have 27, 27 squared plus Dairy Gold of 8, 8 squared plus Lakeland Dairy 7, so we're going to square that. Plus 7 squared plus Dale Farm have 3% of the market, so we're going to add that and square it. Plus 3% squared plus 2% squared plus 2% squared. So you're just going to square the market share of all of them and add them, that's all we're doing. So if you do that, we get an answer of 3,172. So remember how we interpret that. An answer between 2,500 and 10,000 is highly concentrated. So that's the next thing. You will always have to explain it. Would you consider this market to be competitive, moderately concentrated or highly concentrated? It's highly concentrated for that reason that it's greater than 2,500. It's between 2,500 and 10,000. Now, I can't stress this enough. Always just do a little sense check to see if what you're saying actually stacks up. So like if I come up here and I'm like, I look at the top two, I'm looking at Kerry Group and Glambia. Kerry Group of 48% of the market, Glambia have 27% of the market. So those two combined have 75% of the market. So that's not very competitive. Like where there's two firms that have 75% of the market share, like they're very dominant in that case. So I'd just be like, does it make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. You know, I'm, saying it's highly com I'm saying it's highly competitive. And when I just do a little sense check and just look at the, the, the big players in the market, I can see that, yeah, they really are dominant. So you can always just kind of check your answer by just applying a little bit of common sense. It's the same with any of these, kind of these questions that they've asked with market concentrations. Always do a sense check. But just remember that between zero and 1,500, lowly concentrated, 1,500 to 2,500, we're moderately concentrated. And then when we're above 2,500, we're getting into highly concentrated markets.